All right, good morning. Um, my name is Laura Boquin. I work at the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts, and I am here today to teach a lesson from our Learning Through Art program, uh, traditionally an artist in residence program where we teach classes in school, art classes. Um, and each lesson connects to uh, interdisciplinary uh, standards. So we're doing art, but we're connecting to other subjects. This particular lesson we're gonna do today, which is a printmaking lesson, um, ties to Alabama history. So um, standards for fourth grade when we study Alabama history. This is a student example of the project we're gonna make today from one of my former Learning Through Art students, DJ. And the idea behind printmaking is what's cool about it is you can make more than one, you can make multiples. Um, and so the idea will be we'll draw what we're gonna, um, the building that we want to um, replicate. We'll create a printing plate, we'll ink it, and then we'll print it. And then we will kind of embellish the print with color pencils. This is particularly the, the state capitol in downtown Montgomery. Um, some other ideas, other buildings that are around downtown, the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, um, other historic landmarks, the Court Square Fountain, pretty much anything that um, has historical importance, which around Montgomery, around downtown, there's plenty of inspiration. Um, Materials I'll be using today, basic pencil and eraser. Uh, you don't have to have a fancy eraser if you have an eraser on your pencil, that works also. We will be using two sheets of paper um, that need to be around the same size, and then a printing plate. And what I mean when I say that, this particular project uses a styrofoam sheet but if you don't have access to styrofoam, you can use even just like a styrofoam plate and kind of cut out the center of it. And then the two different sheets of paper, one is for you to draw on, and then one will be for you to print on. So you want them to be around the same size um, as what you use for your printing plate. I've got blue tape, and this is just, um, it's painter's tape, this is used to hold in place your paper when you were tracing into the styrofoam creating your printing plate. I'll show you that when we get to it. Scissors, because we're going to cut it out. And printing ink, a very cool tool called a brayer. And so basically it rolls, kind of like if you think about when you're painting a room, how you would roll the, the paint on the walls. This rolls the ink onto the printing plate. Um, and we also want to use a water-based ink, water-soluble, um, because it's very easy to, to clean up. This right here is a tray. Again, you don't have to have a tray just like this. It can be any kind of tray. If you have a cookie sheet, you can put foil down and use that as your tray. And this is just to roll the ink onto the brayer so that it spreads evenly onto the printing plate. I've got baby wipes, just because, like I said, um, the ink does get a little messy, but luckily, if, as long as you have water-based ink, it'll clean up really easily. And then the last thing we will need, I'm going to use colored pencils just because I love them so much, but you don't have to be limited. You can use crayons, markers, paints, um, really anything that you want to embellish your print when it's done. This project, um, it's a lot of fun, and I don't want anybody to want to do it but not feel like they have the ability or the access to it. So we at the museum are offering it also as something we call a creativity kit. So you can contact um, the museum at, um, you can contact me. Uh, my email is lboquin, so that's L-B-O-C-Q-U-I-N at M-M-F-A dot org. And basically just let me know if you want to do this project, what I can do is gather these supplies for you, and you would just come to the museum to check them out um, in a very safe manner. We would make sure that um, everything is sanitized and ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna begin. 
What I'm going to do first is, instead of a pencil, I'm going to use a Sharpie. You don't need a Sharpie. The Sharpie is just so that you can see what I am doing. If you were following along or if you want to do this project later, definitely use a pencil because pencils are erasable. And so if you feel like you don't like what you've made or you want to change something, make it bigger, make it smaller, whatever, um, it's easy to erase. On the note of size, when we are doing printmaking, you don't want a bunch of tiny details, okay? You want big shapes, basic lines, because when you roll that printmaking plate with ink, if you have too many tiny details, the ink will just fill it right in. So when you print it, it'll just kind of be a blob, and you want to be able to see what you drew. You want to see the design. So we're going to think about making um, drawing big and not with, not with small details, okay? I'm going to do um, the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. And whenever I am drawing something, I take a moment, look at the whole object, um, in this case, building, and then I look at the individual pieces to get a feel for each, um, each part of it, break it down into shapes, and break it down into lines. So I'm going to start at the top, okay? And if you look right here, we basically have a, a curvy triangle. And so that is what I'm going to start with on my picture. So I'm going to do right about here a triangle that's kind of just curved like this. OK? And then for the steeple, I'm just going to do a simple line up. And maybe when I do it, um, it's going to be a little bit wider at the bottom and more narrow at the top. Also, similarly, kind of like a triangle, just a very skinny triangle. And then each new part coming down, right here we've got just two lines, and the overall shape is going to end up being a rectangle. OK, so kind of long, like this, a line over. If I want to add those windows in the middle, don't stress about it not necessarily being a shape that you recognize. Break it down how you do recognize it. They each have two long lines going up. And then they make a pointed arch at the top. So you just kind of bring it up and up. Not perfect, but it's art, and I like that. It looks great. All right, next part, another little bit wider, coming down like a rectangle here. And if I want to give it the, um, the idea of this depth, because the actual building, right, has depth. It's three-dimensional. Even though this is a flat picture and my print is going to be flat, I can create um, an implied depth by adding these lines that go backwards, right, towards the back. So they're going to angle down a little bit. All right. Don't have to get too carried away. The front of the building, the face of the building, this is really our focal point, right? Big triangle, very wide at the top here. So it's just going to come down. And if you feel more comfortable um, doing this with a ruler to help guide your lines, by all means, do that. I totally understand that. I'm, I don't have a ruler, so I know mine is not going to be perfect, but I'm comfortable with that. All right. And then oh, it comes in a little bit. I'm basically just following what I see in the picture, like I said, okay? And even though I am adding some characteristic details, I'm not doing very small details. Like, I haven't added in every single um, wooden board that is on the side of the building and things like that. I'm not going to do each individual brick in the building. I'm just getting a feel for the sh overall shape of the building and design. It comes down. A little bit of that depth over here, too. So this guy comes out and then goes back like this. And there's another line back there at the back of the building. Okay. 
Now, the very recognizable um, feature of this building is the staircase coming up, all right? These staircases coming up this way and up this way. So we wanna make sure we get that in there. Even though some of my lines are overlapping, I won't have to um, trace all of them in to the printing plate, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So even if it looks like my picture isn't really making sense right now, I can help it make sense when I do the printing plate. All right, let's give it a couple of lines for stairs, just the implication, and then a few lines going up like this to imply the rails on the stairway. Little doorway down here. Another rectangle is all it is. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of a line down there for the idea of the sidewalk. All right, things that I'm missing. I got the top well done. I got the general shape. I wanna get the windows on the side and these windows and the doorway here with the um, archway above the door. So again, just each one, the windows are just rectangles and they have a little pointed arch at the top of them. That's all I'm adding. Lines that are becoming shapes. Archway on top. And let's see, the doorway is kind of coming down here a little bit. And then the arch above it is pretty big. And then two little windows, just the same as these ones, right here above the doorway. There. All right. Now you'll notice I'm not adding these buildings on the side, a tree over here. I'm not putting um, clouds in the sky right now or doing all the, like, the, the big sidewalk out front or any of the parking meters. Um, I'm not adding all of those features because what we're gonna do is, after we um, trace this into the printing plate, is we're gonna cut it out, and you'll see what, what kind of fun that creates. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my printing plate, which again is just a sheet of styrofoam, and I'm going to put it under this drawing that I've done. So I've got this taped to the board so you can see what I'm doing. Obviously when I'm normally creating, I'm working a little flatter, not vertically. But so I'm going to, like I said, take this blue tape, just a little tiny bit of it. Doesn't take much, tiny little bit. And I'm going to find a part of the print or what will be the print that I um, didn't draw on, okay? So I'm not gonna do it where the tape is over the drawing. That would mess up my picture. I'm gonna put it up here where I, where I will not be tracing. Make sure it's lined up right. There we go. And just wrap it around. And all this is is to help your, your picture not move while you're trying to trace it um, because it's really hard to focus on pressing and tracing, and holding two things together at the same time. All right, so that's on there. And the reason, again, that I'm using blue tape is because um, it's known as painter's tape, and it will pill easily uh, without tearing the paper. So it's very special tape, very important. All right, so for this part, I am going to use the pencil. And what you want to do now is you are just going to trace right over every line that you've done and press really hard. If you accidentally tear the paper, that is not the end of the world. Um, you want to make sure that you've made an indention on the styrofoam. Um, if you press so hard that you tear through the styrofoam, you might be pressing too hard. All right, so let's see how I do. Just going over every line, pressing as hard as I think I need to. This is the tedious part, right? 
We just drew this picture. We had some fun. Now basically we're drawing it again. But there is a purpose and it will look really cool when we are done. Going over every part, got the top done. Now I'm going to move on to the front part of the building. That line didn't quite go exactly where I drew. That's not the end of the world. Keep tracing. The other perk of the tape is that if you forget where you've already traced, you can slightly move your picture um, just on one side, but then it'll go back to in place because you have it uh, adhered to the styrofoam. So far, I think I know where I've traced. We'll see how I do when I think I'm done. All right. And I pressed so hard on that one, it tore the paper a little bit, but hopefully the styrofoam is good. This is hard to do vertically, y'all. <laughs> there we go. We're getting there. Not quite done yet. About halfway done. Okay, and I'm kind of pressing to see, okay, I can feel indentions right here, which means that I've already traced. I need to do this part because it still feels smooth. All right, so we are almost done. I have the stairs left and the bottom of the building, and then we should be good. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier when I said when I am tracing into the styrofoam, I have the ability to kind of fix it a little bit if I need to. Um, and so if I didn't quite get an angle right, I can adjust it because we're basically, like I said, drawing it again. And so if you want to change something at this point, you can just trace it slightly differently or redraw it slightly differently, pressing it into the styrofoam. Like, I want to add one more line here for this doorway. Do that. Um, I think I'll get a little bit of that line there. All right, and then I still need to do the stair um, rungs, the wood that's going on the stair uh, banister. All right, so now I'm just going to take my finger and kind of feel Make sure everything feels like I got it. If it feels smooth, that means that I did not trace that area. I think I got everything. But what I'm going to do now is take the picture off of it. So just gently peel back that blue tape. Move that down. It looks pretty good. What I'm going to do just to be safe is I'm going to go back over a few of the lines if any of them don't look like they're deep enough. I'm going to go back over them one more time with my pencil. And this is just because if they're not quite deep enough, the ink will just cover them right up and we won't quite get our full drawing in there. Let's see. I'm going to add one more line there too. Um, maybe the steeple needs a little bit more. The cool thing about printmaking is that uh, you, you don't necessarily know what you're going to get. So even though I've drawn a picture, um, artists don't necessarily have total control over printmaking, which I think is why those artists who are printmakers like it so much. Um, it's a very, I, I'll say that the ink and the print has a, has a mind of its own. 
something that's kind of exciting. Make that a little stronger. Let's see, and then looks like I got the top rail, but not the floor done. And I really want those stairs to stand out, so I'm going to make those deep for sure. Okay. All right. So now I feel good with this. And the next step is going to be cutting it out. And there's a trick to this. So we are not going to be, um, you don't want to cut up your picture, okay? You want to cut away the negative space. And so what that means is the building that we drew um, is the positive space, right? It has form to it. Th what would be in the background or down below that's not part of our focal point is the negative space, okay? So like air, the space around the object. So I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut out just along the outer edges, the silhouette of my building, of my drawing. Okay, so again, I'm not cutting into my picture. I'm cutting just away the negative space. A trick that's helpful with that, so it, you know, it feels a little stiff, it's hard. So since I've already cut this away, I'm just going to oop, cut off that part. And that helps me out a little bit. Now I don't have that obstructing the rest of my cutting. Same thing there. And of course, the steeple is very narrow. It's very small. So when you're cutting it, there's potential that it might get cut off. That's OK. Um, we can always readjust it and be really careful with mine. Try to not cut it away. All right. in, down this side of the building, and then the stairwell, and then I'm going to go ahead and just cut away all of the bottom. I think I might just use the color pencils for that. stairs to stand out, so I'm actually going to highlight them a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now I have cut out um, my printing plate. And so again, all that means is that this is what I'm going to create a print from. Okay, this is not the final product. This is just part of the process. So before I get my ink out, I'm going to tape up what will end up being part of the final product. So I'm taking my other sheet of paper, my second sheet of paper, and I am putting it up here on the board so you can see it. Okay. And keeping this nearby. Here's the fun part. All right, tray and ink. I'm going to show you a trick to using the ink. Okay, first, before you open it, keep, make sure the lid's on really good, and you want to kind of smush it up. Because um, just like paints do, or if you think about um, mustard or ketchup, when you go to squirt them out, if it's been sitting too long, it does like kind of like liquid first. This ink will work the same way. So you want to kind of mix it up before you try to pour it or squeeze it onto your tray. Otherwise, you're going to get a big uh, puddle of liquid first. And we want it to be thick ink. So I'm mixing it up. Mix, 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 mix. But again, make sure the lid's on really good. Otherwise, you have an even bigger mess before you begin. All right. I'm going to open it. OK. Expect to get some ink on you when you're doing printmaking. Um, if you don't like getting messy, maybe wear some latex gloves. 
but I brought the wipes because I anticipate that I'm going to get ink on my hands. All right, when you squirt the ink onto the tray, I can do it vertically because it's so thick, it's not gonna run down, okay? You want about that much, okay, so a good amount. Um, obviously, if your plate is smaller, you don't have to use that much. Set that to the side. I would normally do this on a table, but so you can see it, I'm doing it vertically. Um, you want to roll it on, roll your brayer. All right, that's just one, one start. That's, that's not what we need, okay? I did it that way, only part of the brayer is covered. From there, you want to roll the other way. You want to make sure that your brayer is completely covered in the ink. And what you want to listen for when you're doing printmaking is it's going to make kind of a uh, squishy sound, okay? So the more you roll it, when it's ready to use, you're going to hear that it's ready to use. So I'm just going to keep rolling. It's starting to make the sound. All right, it's kind of like a crinkle squish. All right, and that means that the brayer is fully covered and ready to ink the plate. So I'm going to, actually, let me be a little bit smarter about this. Let me get out a background sheet of paper for me to roll on. All right, this is just a blank sheet of paper. The only reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to get ink all over this board. All right, so I'm putting it here. I'm going to hold it in place. I'm just going to roll over it like I'm, like I'm painting it. I don't want to press so hard that I fill in the spaces, but I do want it to be covered well enough that it will make a print. It's all trial and error with printmaking, like I said. So if you don't like the first one, get another sheet of paper, roll it again, ink it again. Or if you end up having too much ink on it, get another sheet of paper, press it again without re-inking it. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. So, rolling it on. Trying to not get too much on my hands. All right, put this down. Take this. And I'm going to try to line it up carefully onto my paper. Once you put it flat to the paper, you don't want to move it side to side, otherwise you're going to smush your print, right? So I'm holding it firmly in place, and then I'm going to take my other hand, and I'm going to use um, either the side of my hand, like this. Um, if you have a spoon or um, another flat utensil, you can use that to press on it. And the idea is you, would, you just want to make sure that you evenly have pressed this whole printing plate onto your paper. Again, without moving the plate around while you're pressing it. So I'm holding it still, but just making sure that I get everything covered. At this point, it is stuck to the paper. <laughs> Let's see. All right. And like I said, I don't know what I'm going to get when I peel this away. I hope it looks like the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. We'll find out. All right, are we ready? Very carefully peel it back. There we go. All right, so now we have a print. The printing plate will still be messy at this point. You don't want to just, you know, throw it around. Um, so carefully set it aside. A cool thing about this is you could absolutely rinse this off in water carefully and use it again. They are reusable, okay? So with printmaking, you can do the same project or a different variation of the project multiple times, okay? That is the beauty of printmaking. I'm gonna set that aside. In, um, in a normal uh, environment, where if I'm not filming a lesson, um, if this was like an actual class, at this point we would stop and I would let it dry, and the next class we would add the colors. What I'm gonna do is show you how you can use, after I clean my hands, how you can use um, color pencils to just kind of embellish um, or 
add some fun characteristics and color to your picture. All right, so I'm cleaning my hands. Like I said, as long as it's water soluble or water based, it comes right off. It's really easy to clean. Same thing with the tray and the brayer. Um, again, as long as it's got it's a water based ink, it'll just rinse right right off and clean right up. No big deal. All right, so what I want to do now, I like it. I think it printed well. I'm very happy with that. Um, but I want to add some fun features. So like there's a tree over here. I'm going to add some green over here for the tree. Maybe draw some clouds in the sky, some blue. And something that my students started doing um, two years ago. And I'll never know which student started it. Because once one does that, they're all kind of like, oh, that's cool. I like that. I want to do it too. Is they started coloring within the print. So traditionally, you would just kind of leave this part of the print alone, and we would add like, you know, the extra features in a background. But my students started coloring within the print. And it was such a neat concept. And it really um, makes the prints pop visually. It looks so cool. So I will do that today also. But first, while it's drying, I'm just going to color around it. Luckily, it doesn't take long to dry. So, all right, for the sidewalk down here, I'm going to use kind of like a, I don't know, grayish beige color if I have one. Let's see here. That looks good. A little bit of black on top. Remember, you can always have fun blending colors together. And also, if you don't want it to look realistic, then don't worry about that, okay? So if you want to have a purple sidewalk, let's make it purple. I'll do that. It'll be kind of like shadows. But that's, that part's shady because it's under the stairway. All right. And then I said I wanted to add a little bit of the idea of a tree over here. Even though I can't see the full tree, I'm going to draw a tree in mine. Okay, so. Oops. Using a couple different browns to kind of give the idea of some real bark. Using lines. And then for the leaves on the tree, I'm going to do really quick, but a bunch of like loops. Some might end up being circles or ovals. You can do them however you like. If you even want to add a tree to your picture, you don't have to. That's just how I like to do my trees. You find a darker green. If you can't tell, I really like mixing colors together. But also, if you look at a tree, uh, you're never going to see just one color green on that tree. You're going to see at least, I would say, five different types of greens, OK? Also, you have to consider that there are going to be shadows or that the sunlight might be hitting some of it. So it might be either darker where it's shadows or it might be a lighter value where the sunshine is hitting it. You never know. All right, for the sky, I'm just going to use a basic kind of sky blue. I'm going to put a couple lot or a couple of uh, more organic shapes, kind of blobs, where the clouds are. And from there, I'm just going to kind of scribble in where my sky is. You'll notice I'm trying to be careful and not go into my print yet because I want to make sure it's dry before I color close to it. If you wanted to mix it up and color a background before you print it, um, that is not out of the question. You don't have to do things in the exact same order that I do them. When you're doing art, you have your own artistic license. 
you can make it what you want it to be. All right, let's see here. There's a little bit of a road right there. So I want to imply that with this line. The idea of the road that's out front. Now, the fun part. Going back to the original picture, or even better, if you have the time to go downtown and look at the building that you want to draw and print, um, it's this really pretty red brick, okay? So what I'm gonna use in my lines on the print um, is kind of an orangey red to give the idea of a brick. So I've got two different reds here. One's a little darker and one's kind of a bright red. And I'm just gonna color in some of these lines with this. Let's see. I'm gonna leave the ones that are the windows white because there's white around the windows. White wood, like window panes. a little bit in there. All right. Is there anybody I miss that's white up there? So I'm going to leave that and darken it up to make it a little bit more like brick. Maybe right here at the doorway. There we go. Oh, I think I'll add a little bit more blue right over here between where the tree is and the building. All right, and so there we have a completed print of the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church um, in downtown Montgomery. But like I said, you can pick any historical building or landmark, um, do a little research on the building to tie it to Alabama history. Um, I hope you enjoy, and we would love to see if, if you do this project. Uh, you can always um, post them, send them to um, our marketing person at the museum. That, that email is pr at mmfa.org. And we would love to see uh, any creations that you make inspired by this project. Have a great day. <laughs>